Okay, let's talk about tripods. As a landscape photographer, what do you look for in a good tripod? My first priority is weight. Especially for long hikes in the mountains, it has to be light and compact. At the same time, you want it to be sturdy and reliable, no matter what terrain you're using it on. Unfortunately, we all make the same mistake when we first start out. We buy a cheap, no-name aluminum tripod that's heavy, not sturdy at all, and breaks if you look at it the wrong way. I made this mistake three times before I decided to invest a little more money and buy a proper one. And this was the Bilora C253. This was a game changer for me. It's made out of carbon, it's super lightweight and strong. The legs were quick and easy to extend and it stood on the ground like a tank. I used it intensively for several years. I put it in water, snow, mud, volcanic sand, you name it. It worked like a charm. But unfortunately it broke at some point. I had to quickly find a replacement for a trip to Switzerland. So I bought the Manfrotto Element Traveler carbon tripod. This is a bit heavier at 1.4 kilos, but I had only heard good things about Manfrotto products. So I decided to give it a try. Unfortunately, I quickly ran into problems with this tripod during my week-long trip to Switzerland. Two out of the three legs were difficult to extend, like right now, and I lost one of the rubber knobs at the bottom. Also, although the tripod was heavier, it didn't feel as stable. And the problem with extending the legs got worse with each use, to the point where they just stuck and I had to use brutal force to get them out. So after this fiasco, I decided to go for something a little more expensive. And that's the Faisal CT3442. 450 euros is a lot, but you can really feel the high quality. It weighs just over 1.1 kilo, yet it is super stable and the legs extend smoothly like a well-oiled machine. And one of the reasons I decided to buy this was the fact that I can put my camera directly on the center plate by changing the center color. This allows me to get much closer to the ground, which in turn helps a lot with those wide angle landscape shots. Honorable mention, the Manfrotto MT055X Pro 3. What a name. This beast weighs in at 2.5 kilos, so it's not really suitable for long hikes. I use it for office work and mainly for time-lapse photography, where the tripod has to sit for a long time, because this big boy really does not wobble. Now, a few months ago, KF Concept sent me one of those. The A254C4, another carbon tripod that weighs in at just under 1.4 kg. And at 180 euros, it feels like a good place for a backup tripod. Although considering the price, it does come with some cool features that my expensive main tripod does not have. When fully extended, the A254 C4 reaches a height of 1.75 meters and can support up to 15 kilos which is more than enough even if you're using a big fat telephoto lens. An important factor that separates the bad tripods from the good ones is how easily you can extend the legs. On this model, it can be extended three times using these twist locks. So far, they feel very smooth and I haven't had any problems. Even after heavy use in different terrains, like in this swampy area around water and mud, was straight up standing in seawater. I really cannot stress enough how important this is, having previously had to deal with stuck legs. For me, this alone makes the difference between a miserable time and a fun time out in the field. By the way, if you're ever in a situation where the tripod comes into contact with salt water, you want it to clean it afterwards to prevent damage, as salt water is super aggressive. And another mistake that beginners make is turning the locks too tightly. This 
will damage the tripod. You want to use the twist locks gently. On a good tripod, this will be enough to extend the legs. Now what makes this tripod interesting is not the rather standard maximum height, the maximum weight it can carry or how smoothly the legs can be extended. It's the minimum height. In its basic form, you'll be using your camera at 54 centimeters and you can get a little closer by spreading the legs further apart. But you can also do this. You can pull out the center column, turn it around and put it back in. This allows you to position your camera directly above the ground. So the minimum height is pretty much the same as with my main tripod, but it's much quicker to set up. Having the camera that low opens up a lot of new perspectives. What I love most about this feature, I can now reliably focus stack images in an odd position and still get perfect results. I used to use a sandbag, which is fine in certain situations, but it's really far from perfect. One problem is depending on the focal length you're using, you need to watch out to not include the tripod's legs in the photo composition when setting it up like this. As an example, this was shot at 9mm to illustrate the problem. Of course, we can still always Photoshop this out if we really need to. The center column feature comes with a few more little problems. For example, if your camera doesn't have a flip screen, it's definitely going to be super annoying to set up the composition without lying on the ground, because otherwise you'll operate your camera at this weird angle where you can't see anything. Another problem I had was simple attaching and setting up the camera under the tripod. It was super fiddly, but I guess that's a problem that gets better with a bit of time and experience. I should also say, that this is not a unique feature to this model, but there are many different tripod manufacturers who incorporate this into their products. So of course, when we use a tripod, we want it to be sturdy. Usually, after using a tripod for a while, you can quickly tell if it's reliable or not. And again, I'm looking at these cheap no-name products that I would never put a camera on again. The A254C4 does what it is supposed to do. Hold the camera securely in place. No matter how I set up the tripod, it felt pretty stable every time I used it so far, even on windy days. I would not say it is as sturdy as the Faisal tripod, but it's miles ahead of the tiny Manfrotto travel tripod. And another cool feature, you can remove one of the legs and use it as a monopod. Just screw on the orange middle plate, attach your tripod head and you're ready to go. This is something often used when you don't have much space to work with. So think of something like a sporting event. It can also be used for landscape photography when you want to be a little more flexible and quicker. A monopod can help. The A254C4 does come with its own tripod head right here. A fairly standard ball head with a bubble level. However, as I use several tripods, I also use the same Manfrotto tripod head on each of them to be quicker. This one right here. I have it three or four times and I use it on pretty much every tripod. So, as I haven't tested this head, I can't say much about its quality. It looks solid though. So, this has now quickly become my backup tripod. Replacing the old Manfrotto travel tripod. Although it is not as sturdy and is a little bit heavier than my main tripod, there are times where I'm using this one instead. For example, when I shoot close to the ground as the middle column switch feature lets me quickly set up the camera in such a way. Another point where the KF-1 beats the Faisal tripod is its compact size, which makes transporting it so much easier, whether on a hike or traveling by plane as an example. In fact, on my recent hiking trips, I solely brought the KF tripod with me to save a little bit of space. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a good entry-level tripod instead of wasting money 
on cheap gear that breaks instantly, consider investing a little more and get something like this. Not only will you have a lot more fun shooting, but your photos will be better and your camera will thank you for not putting it on a wobbly piece of junk. So that's it for this little tripod adventure. I hope I could bring in some clarity how to choose tripods and maybe I was able to convince you buying something a little more expensive, but also a little more reliable. And thank you so much for watching this video.